I said put it in your math folder, put it in your folder, not in your mailbox. We're going to start lesson 1.8. And in this lesson, you're going to be learning about the order of operations. It's the order that you do a problem in that has different operations in it. So maybe it has subtraction and addition in it. It has some exponent in it. And maybe it has parentheses. Or maybe it has division and multiplication and addition in it. So it has multiple different kinds of operations. That's enough. So in that case, what you should do is you follow these steps in order to uh, get the answer. Okay. And there are some ways to remember this. One of them is this acronym PEMDAS. So just remember it's PEMDAS. That can help you remember the order. Or, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's another. Stop talking. Raise your hand and wait for permission to speak. already been worn twice. Okay. Raise your hand. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's one way to remember it. Here's what it means. P stands for parentheses. So what you have to do is you have to remember that if the problem has parentheses in it, those are those, you know, parentheses look like, right? So if it has parentheses in it, then you have to do all operations that are inside the parentheses first. Okay? Then look for exponents to do. Because if there's any exponents in the problem, we have to find the answer to the exponents using the exponents or powers. Then once you're done with all of the exponents, then you can go on to any multiplication or division. Now, somebody said, what's L to R mean? L to R. What does that mean now? David? Right to left. Actually, left to right. L to R. Left to right. But yeah, you got the idea. So, if there's multiplication and division, you would do them in order from left to right. Try not to make that noise. Because it's really distracting. Then just set it down. Pretend it's an open glass. Okay? Just leave it alone and listen, okay? Leave it alone and follow along. So look up here. Here we go. Then, that's all in step three. And you want to complete all of the multiplication and division before you go into step four. In fact, in all of these cases, you should do all of the step before going on to the next step. You have to complete the step before going on to the next step. The last step is subtraction and addition, or addition and subtraction. Again, what you should do is do them in order from left to right. So if you have subtraction, and then addition, and then subtraction, that's what you do in that order. Subtraction, addition, subtraction to get the answer. You do the same thing for division and multiplication. If there was division and then multiplication and then division, that's the order that you would do them in. Okay? Let's look at an example. What you want to do is, we're going to work out all the problems from left to right and from top to bottom. So I want everyone to copy down this example. Write this down in your notes. 7 times 3 plus 2 squared minus 3. 7 times 3 plus 2 squared minus 3. Now, 
I wrote down the, um, the steps, just using the abbreviations again. Step one's P stands for what, class? Parentheses. Parentheses, so look for any parentheses. Are there any parentheses in the problem? No. No. Nope. So then we can go on to the next step. Look for any exponents. Are there exponents? Yes. Tim? Yes, there is. It's 2 squared. Yeah, 2 squared. So we have to find the answer to this first. And so the way that you will do this is to write the answer below the power. 2 squared equals 4. So write 4 right underneath the 2 squared. Now, when you were doing addition and subtraction and multiplication, when you were first learning how to do that, that's how your problems were written. One number plus another number equals another number down below. Like uh, 6 plus 7 equals 13. Oops. 13. And so what we're going to do is think about that same thing, writing the answer below. Okay? That's why you're going to write the answer below the problem that you're doing. It also helps us to keep track of what we've done and what we still have left to do in the problem. So, let's go back to the problem. That's the only exponent, right? So then we're done with exponents, and we can move on to step three. Do all multiplication and division in order from left to right. Well, there's one multiplication, seven times three. So write the answer to seven times three underneath it. Write 21. 7 times 3 is 21. Now, bring down the plus sign and bring down the minus sign because we still have to do those. But we have, we've completed the 7 times 3, which is 21. We've completed 2 squared equals 4. So now this is our new problem that we have to finish. 21 plus 4 minus 3. We've done the multiplication, we can go on to step four, and it says we should do them in order from left to right. So next, you do 21 plus four, write the answer, 25, and then bring down the minus three, and then do 25 minus three is 22. Okay. Now, all of these steps are the proof of our answer, okay? So you have to show all of the proof that this expression equals 22. So yes, you have to show all of these steps. That's one of the biggest, uh, most common questions that I get from sixth graders when I'm teaching this. Do we have to show all those steps? Yes, that's the proof of your answer. That's the proof of your answer, okay? And so, just like if you were proving anything else, you have to prove it so that it makes sense. You can't skip any of the steps. Leo? I have my pencil. Yeah. Isn't it fine if you do it the same way, but you just um, like map it out in a different format? What do you mean a different format? <laughs> So it kind of goes down like a triangle. What if you just had the number? So sometimes, so I learned how to do the same thing, but just do it like it would look a little bit differently, but it would still get the same answer. Is that okay? Well, I think it's really helpful to write when you, for example, do the seven times three. If you write 21 in the middle of it, instead of writing 21 over here, it kind of shows that we've completed this part. Okay? Sometimes I just like circle the multiplication and then I write the answer right below it. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right below it. Again, we wrote the answer right below it. 
to 2 squared. So you can look back and see where that 4 came from. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we wrote down the minus 3 right below it because we haven't worked on, we haven't done that yet. So you need to bring that down. Colton? If you've never showed your work, would you, have, would you still do a good job? If you've never showed your work? Well, or if you didn't show your work, yeah, you, got the, the, you got the right answer. And you still got the right answer. You'll, when, you, um, when you're doing this, Colton, when you're doing this, you're going to be graded on these steps. So you're going to be graded on these steps. So this is a three-point question. And so if you just write the answer, you'll be missing these two points. Not if you only get one out of three points. That's only a 33%. Okay. Yep. Did you get a good what you said? Occupation. What? Occupation. Did you get a good job? Because you're still getting it right. Would you get a good job? Like, you're well, still getting the answer right. If if there were two people that were applying for the same job and one was willing to prove their answers to me and the other one wasn't, I would hire the one that was willing to prove the answer to me. And what if you But what if the one that was willing to prove the answer and, and you got everything wrong? And what if you don't the answer right to the way Then we would be able to see where they uh, made their mistakes. Okay? Alright, that's enough. Right. That doesn't seem you don't make sense. Go to your assignment. Go to uh, open up to page twenty four. Number three. Write down ten plus six squared times two divided by nine. Yep. That's all our homework is? Yeah. This is the first question in your homework. Then, at the top of your paper, write down one. First step is P, parentheses. Two, second step is E, exponents. Third step is M, D, for multiplication division. And then the fourth step is A, S, for addition and subtraction. So write that down on the side of your paper. I guess so, yeah. Follow directions, Adam. Follow directions. Write down the number three. Right there. For assignment, can you just write all the down and make a sign in it? Just do the ones that are triangle. Again, if you just write the answer, that's worth one point. But you have to show the other steps to in order to get the other two points. Uh, yes, it will be graded, yes. Yes. Yep. This assignment is graded. Nice. Yes. Yes. This is graded. Everything that we are doing is being graded. What? Everything that we're doing is being graded. Wait, but he said it won't be graded unless So listen, we're gonna do this as a practice assignment, and then I'm gonna give you a graded assignment. And so yes, it's gonna be graded. Well, do you get graded at practice? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. You get graded at practice. Listen. Yes, you get evaluated. You're practicing the right skills. So stop arguing with me. Okay, copy down number three. Now, there's no parentheses, right? So let's go on to step two. Exponents. What does 6 squared mean, Calvin? 6 times 6. 6 times 6. Write the answer below that. Then, bring down the times 2 divided by 9 and the 10 
There's no more exponents, so we can go on to step three. Which one do we do first? Myra? Multiplication and division. And in order from left to right. So we do the multiplication first. 72. Bring down the divided by 9, and then the 10 plus. Write this down. <laughs> then do the 72 divided by 9, and then bring down the 10, and write the answer. Okay? So this is a four point question. One, two, three, four steps. Okay. Any questions on that? Colton? So this is harder to do with the triangle than your automatic. Then you should practice this. They're gonna need to practice this way then. Okay? So then they'll need to practice this. Thomas. What happens if you didn't write down like <coughs> triangles, but you wrote down everything but the triangles? What triangles? I mean, oh, you mean this? Yeah. That's that's okay. So you don't have I'm to. I'm just write showing you where <coughs> the answer came from. So you don't have to write down like that green one. You don't have to write down that. No, you don't have to make that. I'm just showing you where this came from. Okay. okay. Ben. Um. We are, we're on page 25. This is solving, solving this expression using the order of operations. Okay, I know. Number four. Let's do number four together, and then I'll let you get work independently on your own. Um, 10 plus 6 squared. Minus 11 divided by 5. <laughs> Stop interrupting. Break this down. So, in this one, there are parentheses. And anytime there are parentheses, what you have to do is simplify, do you know what simplify means? Simplify means get that as simple as possible or to get it to one answer. And you have to follow the order of operations inside the parentheses. So if you are working in um, parentheses that has lots of other operations, then you have to follow the order of operations, Calvin. <laughs> then you have to follow the order of operations Distracting other people. Okay. You have to follow the order of operations in the parentheses. So follow the steps. What's the first step in the parentheses? Arthur? Uh, uh, 36 minus 11. Yeah, so then do 36 minus 11. Now, that's what's inside the parentheses. That's called simplified because we've got this down to one number. It's simple. That's what that word means in math. Is simplified means we have reduced it to one number. Okay? Now, these parentheses. Do we need those parentheses anymore? No, no, no. Not in this case because we just have the division and the addition left. And so the purpose of the parentheses was to tell us that we needed to do this first. So it's, it's important to see what is the purpose of these parentheses. Sometimes parentheses will tell you that you have to multiply. But in this case, it's just telling us to do this first. Once you've done this, now you can get rid of the parentheses. You don't need them anymore. So then just write 25 
divided by 5 and the 10 plus, because that's what's left to do. Then finish the problem. So 10 plus 25, Sam? 35. Can we do 10 plus 25 first? No. No, no. what should we do first, though? Yvonne? We should do the 25 divided by 5 first. The division is in step 3, and the addition is in step 4. So do the division first. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then add the 10. Okay? Any questions on this one? Colton? David? How many problems do you do? You'll be doing three through 15. Three through 15. Okay. Those 12 questions. All right.